Hello everyone and welcome back to the Lens Studio Physics Game Tutorial Series. In this video we are going to add the Player Collider which is how they're going to keep the soccer ball up. So let's get started by going to the Asset Library and we're going to search for the Primitive Pack. And we're going to add this little tube here. So let's open it up and drag it into the Objects panel and all we need is the tube so I'm going to delete the rest. And then let's adjust the rotation, the position, and the scale so that it matches up with the scene. And now we're going to add an image to the tube, and we can't see it right away. It looks like it's on the bottom, so let's rotate it 90 degrees. And we still can't see it from the front, so we're going to go to the image material and check two-sided. I created a texture with a glowing ring, and we can attach this to the tube to create a realistic glow effect. So now let's add the ring glow texture to it. And let's scale it up, and we're just going to add a little glow around the edge of this tube. And I'm going to set the blend mode to add so that it glows. And then we're going to adjust the scale a little bit more so that it matches up with the edges. And it's too long right now, so let's adjust the scale even more. Now I'm going to rename this image glow and duplicate it. And then we're going to scale this one down to cover up the inner edges. And just lower the alpha a little bit so that it blends in well. And there we go. If we move it around, it looks like it's a nice glowy tube. So the next step is going to be adding the collision to this. So I'm going to add a collider. We're going to set the type to cylinder. Make sure that show collider is on. And then let's just adjust the radius until we see something that matches with the width of it. And that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to adjust the length to be really long just so that it's very easy for the soccer ball to collide with it. Great. That looks awesome. So let's do a couple tests here. Let's just move this around and see how it collides. Cool, that looks good to me. Now we're gonna add a JavaScript file and we're gonna start doing some coding. So I'm gonna name this game controller and drag it into the scene. And the first step is going to be adding the input for the collider object. So let's do that. Now I'm going to add a reference variable to that collider's transform properties so I can save myself some time later on. And then I'm going to add a function called onTouch, and I'm going to bind that to both the touch start event and the touch move event because we want this to fire whenever the user is touching or moving their finger across the screen. And then I'm going to add event data as a parameter, and that's going to allow us to access the touch position. So I'm going to create a touch position variable, and then we're going to set that in the function. And then we're going to need one more thing. We're going to need the camera component because we're going to access something called the screen space to the world space. And this is essentially converting that screen space where the user taps to the world space in the scene. So we're gonna put that touch position in there and then we also need a depth in the 3D scene. So I'm gonna add a variable called Z depth and from the camera to the tube is 80 units. So we're gonna set that to 80 and then we'll just put that Z depth in there. And now what we need to do is essentially just set the collider's position to that new touch position. Now you can see when I tap and drag around the screen, it works just like it should. And I actually want to add some smoothing to the movement. So we're going to start by adding a variable called is touching. We're going to set it to false. And then when we are in the on touch function, it's going to be true. And then we're going to add a touch end function and we're going to bind that to the touch end event. And then in there, we're going to set is touching to false. And we need to know whether we're touching the screen or not because this next function is going to fire once per frame or the update event. So I'm going to create a function called update collider position. And then we're going to declare that function down here. And then in that function, the first thing we're going to do is check if touching is true. So if we are touching the screen, then we can do the movement. And I'm going to create another variable called the lerped position. This is essentially the smoothed position from the point that we are touching and the point that the collider is currently at. So we're comparing that position that we have, and then we're comparing the current position of it, and we're setting the smooth value to 0.5. That should be good. And then I'm just going to move the line of code that sets the collider's position from the onTouch function down here to the update collider positions function. And now we have a fully functioning player controller that responds to the soccer ball. In the next video, we're going to add some wall collisions and we're going to code it so that they work no matter what your phone's resolution is. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.